Welcome to La Mia Italy, a series of short videos by a Brit with Italian blood who's lived in both Britain and Italy and loves them both. When I lived in Italy I kept hearing references to Anglo-Sassone, Anglo-Saxon, usually said with a sneer and usually in response to something I was doing or had just said, and I was never sure what it actually meant. I knew it was something to do with the English, but wasn't totally certain. At first I thought, well, the Anglo-Saxons were from the North Sea coast of Germany and Denmark, so, perhaps they were referring to Northern Europeans. That would be historically accurate and, incidentally, show great knowledge on the part of the Italians. However, it was sometimes being used in a way which excluded continental Europe, so that couldn't be right. Surely, they couldn't be in the Anglo-Saxon free areas of Wales and Scotland, so perhaps it's just another way of saying English. Unfortunately not. For my Celtic friends, being in Italy can be a frustrating experience meaning you have to decide whether to grin and bear it and accept Inglese as meaning Britain as a whole, or correcting it each time and saying, don't you mean Britannico or Regno Unito? I don't think this will change any time soon, as almost all Italians say Inglese or Inglaterra, regardless of age or education. And by the way, I don't want to be critical of the Italians, as English is full of inaccurate names for other countries too. The Germans call themselves the Deutsch, so are probably right, yet we give that name to the Dutch and I don't think the Hungarians really are Huns either. In the end, I worked out that what Italians really mean by Anglo-Saxon is the UK and North America, and possibly Australia and New Zealand too. It's not exactly the same thing as the Commonwealth, nor is it the English-speaking world, and come to think of it, it's actually quite a useful word. As for the genuine historical Anglo-Saxons, they do have some connections to Italy which are just about still visible. Anglo-Saxon kings, including Alfred the Great, Alfredo il Grande in Italian, Offa of Offa's Dyke fame and Ethelwulf, all made some sort of pilgrimage to Rome and probably stayed in the Borgo, the Anglo-Saxon area of Rome, also known as the Scola Saxonum, between the Vatican and Castello Sant'Angelo. The Scola Saxonum was the Anglo-Saxon quarter or Borgo of Rome where a small community of English lived, mainly populated by those with religious or other business with the Vatican. They probably had their own militia to protect them too, as these were uncertain times in Rome. The community declined after the Norman conquest, but did linger on for a couple of centuries. The area may have been destroyed by a fire in the 9th century, which legend says was halted by Pope Leo IV by making the sign of the cross from the balcony of the old St Peter's. It isn't clear whether Leo did this in time to save the Borgo, or his concern was just with St Peter's. The event is captured by Raphael, in his painting The Fire in the Borgo many centuries later. I wouldn't rely on it for historical accuracy. The painting is in the Pontifical Palace in the Vatican and that forms part of the Vatican Museum so you can go and see it. So what else can you still see of Anglo-Saxon Italy today? Firstly, there's the Church of Santo Spirito in Sassia, as in Saxon, and the Hospedale of Santo Spirito in Sassia, one of the ancient hospitals of Rome, now a conference centre, but founded by the Anglo-Saxon king, King Eno of Wessex, who abdicated and retired to Rome. The original building has a foundings wheel through which babies could be left with the hospital, rather than being abandoned on the streets. It's really just the names which remain to remind us of their Anglo-Saxon origins, but I like these sorts of connections and having an excuse to see things a bit off the beaten track in Rome, even though you're really just near the Vatican. Secondly, and only if you're really keen, you can see the earliest surviving complete Bible in the Latin Vulgate, which was produced by the Anglo-Saxon monks in Jarrow Abbey around the year 700 and was taken to Rome, but has wound up in the Biblioteca Laonciana in Florence. I can't say I've seen it myself. And thirdly, the word Borgo, which comes from the Germanic Berg, like in Edinburgh, and means village in Italian, but has also become La Borgata, which are the municipal estates built just outside Rome, typically in the interwar years, with the architectural style of the era. I'm trying to get through a whole video without using the word fascist. This is Prima Valle, by the way, which is typical. I'm not saying the links between the Anglo-Saxon world are particularly strong, but if you are what the Italians would describe as anglo saxon I hope you found this interesting. I'll be doing more videos about Italy and this sort of thing, so please do consider subscribing. In the meantime, in bocca al lupo, and I'll see you soon.